before church and I was just thinking about how much I hate the devil and sometimes you just have to look the devil in the face and just say stop God's got me you don't have control over this situation and I'm gonna give it to God I'm tired of the voices I'm tired of the lies I'm tired of the distractions but God I want you right in the middle of my storm and in that storm I'm gonna sing a little louder I'm going to shout a little louder. I'm going to praise a little louder because, God, you are for me. And no one can be against me because you are with me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you believe that today? Oh, God is with you. He is beside you. He is before you and behind you. Oh, let's see. I 
aren't you thankful for that promise? God, we're going to sing a little louder. We're going to praise a little louder. God, because you are with us, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. This next song that we're going to sing is called Withholding Nothing. And it's simply a song that encourages you to just lay it at the feet of Christ. Because ultimately our lives are better in his hands. We are happier and we are so much more fulfilled when we are in the will of God. So I encourage you as we sing this song to just give it to him and lay it at his feet. Whatever you're going through, he wants that struggle. He wants it all. Yes, Jesus. Go! 
Jesus. Why don't you just take a, a big deep breath this evening? Take a deep breath this evening and trust that the Lord has you. The Lord is with you. The Lord will walk with you through it all. Every high, every low, no matter what the situation is, no matter what it may look like right now, the Lord is with you. He's with you. You can trust Him today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we give the Lord one more hand clap of praise? Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. As you're seated, turn to someone and say, he's with you tonight. He's with you tonight, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, as we've mentioned the last few weeks, uh, we've kind of uh, christened or commissioned this night to be a night of leadership, and we are pausing our midweek study. We've been on the last couple of weeks. We've been talking about on Wednesday nights at 7, God, Money, and Me. And uh, we've been diving into the topic of biblical stewardship, personal finances, and those sorts of things. And so we're going to pause that for tonight, and we're just going to have kind of a discussion around a few items. And I want to share... Uh, a few notes related to leadership and service and ministry. And then we're going to discuss a few things coming up on our summer calendar. And we're kind of doing this tonight a little bit different because we've got some big events that will need some people's involvement and engagement and volunteerism and input and feedback. And so that's really what tonight uh, is all about. And again, next Wednesday night at 7, we're going to jump back into our study on God, money, and me and see how the Lord calls us and uh, to trust Him with our possessions and with our finances next Wednesday night. Have you been enjoying the study, God, money, and me, the last couple of weeks? And it's been, it's been good. It's been good. But uh, turn to your neighbor and say, leadership. 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 And to, to a lot of different people, leadership may mean, you know, a million different things. And, but for our purposes tonight, we're going to kind of just group up leadership and ministry and service and involvement kind of in just a one big category this evening. I want to share with you just a few notes and highlights related to leadership, to service and ministry. And then we're going to pass a few things out and uh, have some discussion. So tonight will be interactive. We want your input and feedback and thoughts and uh, uh, as we move forward into the summer. And I want to mention first that there's a scripture in the Bible, Ephesians 2.10, that speaks about the work of God. And it says, For we are His workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. We were created as the workmanship of God and were designed for good works. The Lord has good works for you to perform on this earth before you die. Your life is not meaningless. Your life is not purposeless. Your life... Uh, is not vain or empty. God has good works for you to do. Good things for you to do that are pleasing and that make an impact upon the earth. And by this scripture, we know that when we experience a new birth in Christ, we're placed on a new path, on a new walk. And this conveys the process by which we discover and develop a calling. Every human being alive, has at least two callings. And by that I mean first, we're called to salvation. 
right? We're called to be saved. We're called to be born again, to repent of our sins, to be baptized in Jesus' name, to be filled with the Spirit. Every human being alive has that calling hovering over their head, that if the Lord has his way in their life, he will lead them to salvation and redemption. But the second calling that every individual has is after they fulfill that first calling, they're called into service and ministry, into a purpose to fulfill uh, within the church today. God doesn't just save you and then slip you on a shelf. God saves you for service in the kingdom. He takes us with his hands and he molds the very fabric of our lives. He gives everybody a place of service and a ministry to fulfill. And that's what tonight, a night of leadership, is all about. All of us are called and into service and into ministry, into those good works that the Bible says, I want to encourage you tonight that if there is breath in your body, if you, your heart is still beating, and if you are still alive, you can be sure that God has a meaningful and a significant calling for you to fulfill on the earth before you die. Amen. You are uniquely designed. You are uniquely wired and shaped by God for His good works. You're not an assembly line product. You're not mass produced without any thought. You are custom designed, one of a kind, and an original masterpiece. That ought to make you kind of lift your head a little bit higher and kind of raise your shoulders back a little bit when life wants to weigh you down. You are a masterpiece. Tell yourself, I'm a masterpiece. I'm a masterpiece. I'm created by God, custom designed, one of a kind. And if all of us here tonight were to attune our ears and listen to the Spirit, you will hear the voice of God calling you and tugging you and drawing you and moving you out of your past and into a divinely appointed future. We see this illustrated in 1 Corinthians 9.19. The Apostle Paul wrote of his desire to serve in the church. He says, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Very interesting words in this scripture. Paul conveys that though he had an outside profession that supported his ministry, uh, he, he, he was a tent maker. And even though he did have this outside profession and a salary, you could say, that made him free from all men, he decided on purpose to step inside of the church to serve the kingdom so that he would gain the more. That there's something to gain working for God, working within the kingdom that we can't get anywhere else in this earth. That there's something to gain. He understood there was something to receive. There was something to get inside the kingdom as a servant, as a minister, as a leader called of God that he couldn't get outside of the church doing any other thing with his life. We see in the scripture that true fulfillment never comes through self-gratification. True fulfillment never comes from serving uh, your life just for you. But when you give yourself to a higher calling, to a higher kingdom, that's where true fulfillment comes into action and into play. People who give their time and their effort to the church will always receive something in return. People who kind of step out in faith to lead, to serve, and to minister, you always get something back in return that you may not expect in the beginning. Paul said, I step out, I serve, I volunteer, I get engaged so that I would win the more, there's more to win out there in the kingdom. You know what? I've seen many times that people who reach out to help others heal realize that as they're reaching, something in them heals in the process. 
What's that scripture say? Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. That in the serving, in the working, in the ministering for other people, God does a work in you. True fulfillment in God never comes through self-gratification. But when you step out and you lead to minister and to serve somebody else, God does a work in you. 1 Peter 2, 5 and verse 9 says that every saint, every believer is anointed as a priest when they experience a new birth in Christ. Scripture says you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house, as a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And when God through salvation calls you out of sin and out of darkness into the light of the spirit that in that process he anoints you for a work he anoints you as a called people as a chosen generation as a priest to stand in this earth and to invite others to join in the process by speaking of a royal priesthood in first peter 2 scripture refers to the power and the purpose of the church today. We are priests in the, in the earth. Our job is to facilitate others encountering and experience the power of God in the world today. And for us to really fully understand that, at times it's important to go back and really see and discover what was a priest called to do in the Bible. We find in Deuteronomy 10 and 8, it speaks of this, that at that time, the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. Everyone say to bear the ark. Now these words, bear the ark, it's, it's biblical language that, that, that conveys carrying the ark, transporting the ark, feeling the burden and the weight of the ark, picking it up on their shoulders, facilitating the ministry of the, of the ark and bringing the ark from place to place. That the tribe of Levi, those who are called to be priests, are called to bear the ark, to stand before the Lord to minister to him and to bless his name to this day. This is the calling of a priest and the earth today. And in the New Testament, as spiritual priests, when we're baptized in the Spirit and filled with the Spirit and anointed by God, we're called as a priest. To carry something on behalf of someone else. To stand before the Lord and minister so that the power of God can be experienced and felt by all of those around us. And what's interesting that before every priest was called to serve in the temple or the tabernacle in the Bible, that the anointing oil was poured over them. And they were commissioned, they were called to the work. And in like manner, when we're filled with the Spirit, we receive an anointing by God. Not just for that moment, but for a ministry to fulfill and the earth as a priest. And in Acts 2, when on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit was poured out upon the believers in that upper room, they weren't just filled with the Spirit, but they were anointed for the work. They were anointed for a work to do within the earth. And priests lived with a different set of priorities than the rest of the world. They knew that they weren't called to just be like everyone else, but they, they, they were called, they belonged to the Lord and to fulfill His purpose and His work. The Bible says that we are purchased with His blood. We belong to the Lord. We're called for His purpose, and you will be most fulfilled when you're connected to a God-given purpose. And if you've ever experienced a, a new birth in Christ, not only has the Lord saved your soul, but He's given you a calling. And he wants to draw you into a ministry, into a work of service, into good works on this earth before you die. There's a purpose for, for your life. And one of the key responsibilities, as mentioned, we see in Deuteronomy, of the priest was to carry the Ark of the Covenant on behalf of the people. 
And in that day, in the time of the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant represented and symbolized the power and the presence of God. And the priests would pick that big ark up. They'd carry it on their shoulders. It took, it took several different priests. And when they would move from place to place, the priests would pick up that ark on their shoulders and they would walk from place to place, from land to land, from region to region until they would set it up in a new location. And it was the ark carried on the shoulders of the priests that brought the pillar of fire that led the people by night and brought the glory cloud that led the people by day. And it was that ark of the covenant that gave the people victory in battle and allowed them to conquer all of their enemies and anything that would rise up to oppose them. But somebody had to carry the ark. And in the church, leadership that, that we're not leading as a business owner would lead. We're not trying to sell widgets or sell products or, you know, and we're, we're, we're to spiritual things. We're, leadership in the church is carrying the ark on behalf of someone else, feeling the burden and feeling the weight of it so that someone else can encounter and experience a touch of the living God. And so every time you step up to lead or to serve at Victory Chapel or you volunteer or you help out or you do this or you do that for the benefit of the ministry of the church, what you're carrying the ark so that someone else can experience the power and the touch of a living God. And as the church today, we're called as spiritual priests. That though we don't kind of dress like the priests used to dress in the Old Testament, no one has those big hats and you know those kinds of things, and, and we live in modern times, but spiritually we're called as priests today. We're called as priests, and that ark sometimes feels a little heavy, but there's nothing more fulfilling than walking in a God-ordained calling and purpose in the earth, and that's why. It takes all of us to carry the ark. It takes all of us to carry the ark. So every time you pray for your church, you pray for the leaders in your church, every time you're engaged and you volunteer and you help, you're carrying the ark of God so that someone else can be saved and touched and delivered by the power of a holy God. That's the power of of leadership in the church, that, 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 that we're carrying the ark of God. And so I want to I commend all those who are serving at Victory Chapel. We've got a great team of volunteers, and any good thing that we've ever done as a church has come through our team of volunteers and everyone putting their mark on it. And as a church, we're new. We're, we're only about a little over three years uh, into a new church. But the Lord has done a lot in a short period of time. And he's done a lot because we've all been involved. And, uh, and uh, I want to say just a quick moment of thank you to all, everyone that serves in whatever capacity. And that's kind of what we're just pausing and highlighting and emphasizing this evening. And so when we view what the Bible says about the call of God, all of us at times, at some point, ought to feel prompted and pushed to step up and to serve, to put your hands to help carry the ark forward. In every church, there are people at, at many different spiritual levels. We don't expect everyone to be at the pl same place of spiritual growth. There are people that are at every different spiritual level, but we want to help everyone, no matter where you are, to grow and to take more steps and, and to take whatever your next step is. We believe God has a next step for everybody, and we want to encourage you and push you and challenge you and, and give you the strength that it takes to take whatever your next step is. And in every church, there are people at different levels of leadership, but everyone, no matter where you may be, are called to lead and to serve, even if in small ways. And so tonight, in our monthly night of leadership, our goal is to emphasize this call and invite you to get involved in the mission of God 
all right, in San Marcos, Texas. It's never been God's plan for a small group of people. It takes everyone with their hands, everyone carrying a little bit of the weight moving forward. As a church, we've been at our best when everyone is engaged, involved, and working together to push the vision forward. And no matter what mistakes you may have made in your life, no matter how many times you may have tripped up or how you may view yourself this evening, that you can make a difference and you can help carry that ark so that someone else can be saved in this city. And I want to remind all of our leaders here tonight that early in uh, this year, in 2022, we introduced our theme uh, as a church, and our theme for 2022 is Restore. And if you remember, in our Restore service in January, we took some time in a service and we wrote down all of the things that we want God to restore. And uh, I want you to think about wh which... Which was the thing that you wrote down? If you were here with us at that time in January, uh, what did you write on the board that you wanted God this year to restore at VC? Also want to highlight our artist in residence and uh, Miguel and uh, drew us a nice restored and uh, along with a few of the things. But I wanted to uh, just ask you to, to remind you, what did you write down on the board? And we've saved this, and at various times throughout the year, we're going to take it back out, and we're going to pray over it again. And we're going to pray that whatever we wrote down on the board, that God would in time help us, lead us in some way to restore whatever it we may need to be restored in our lives. And so that's our theme, and so that's our belief, that's our prayer. God, every service restore somebody on some level, whether on a Wednesday night or on a Sunday, God, restore somebody, restore something in our lives. Uh, whether it's someone's finances, God, restore someone's finances. Or, or whether it's an addiction, God, restore an addiction, Lord, bring someone back. Whether it's a marriage, restore marriage or someone's mind or heart, Lord, or relationships, Lord, restore. Lord, we release restoration, Lord, in this church uh, throughout the year of 2022. We believe that is what God de desires to do as a church. As leaders, that's our vision. We're all, that's a target. We're all trying to hit God, restore this city this year in Jesus' name. That's our theme this year as a church and as leaders. And so uh, throughout the week, pray that word, Lord, restore at Victory Chapel. Let Victory Chapel be a church that works complete restoration, oh God, where people are delivered and set free by the power and by the work of God. Lord, restore them emotionally, restore them mentally, restore them spiritually. If, if, if you're trying to get back your walk with God or your experience with God from your past, I believe God's going to restore that this year. If you're trying to build something back, if you're trying to get back where you used to be, or you're trying to get somewhere new, we believe God can restore you this year. And so that's the filter through which we're looking at this year, at the church, as leaders, and uh, that when we pray, and that's, that's what we, why we do what we do, that God would restore some things in this city. And the verse that we read in January as a church is Joel 2.25. And this verse declares the redemptive potential of God in our emotional well-being, in our families, our marriages, our jobs, our finances, our ministries, our church. It says these words, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, all of the stuff that ate you up, all of the stuff uh, that consumed you, all of the stuff that stole something from you, all of the stuff that, that, that distracted you, all of the stuff that weighs you down, all of the little things that eat at you throughout the week in life, that God said as a prophecy, I will restore to you the years. Have you ever been at the place I wish I could get back that time I spent doing that or the time Lord wasted in, in regret and just mistakes and, and failures and just life and just sin and just a bunch of mess and drama the Lord says I can restore all of that 
And that's our vision. And so tonight, as leaders, we're reminding us, uh, everyone, of that vision. And so this year, not only do we believe that you will experience restoration on a personal level, but we believe that you, everyone in this room, can help others experience restoration. That when we all pick up the ark and we carry that ark forward, we're helping someone else to be restored. Whenever, Whenever someone in this room prays or fasts or sacrifices unto the Lord or worships or gives with their whole heart, you're helping someone else experience restoration. And sometimes that work happens in a single moment. Other times it may happen through a process that some people, boom, in a moment, God will do a complete work. Other times it takes other people a bit longer, depending on what that may be. And as a church, we want to help you find restoration, whether it happens in a moment or whether it happens over time. We want to walk with you so that everything in your life can be restored in Jesus And so that's what we as a church are all about. And as leaders, we're kind of reemphasizing these things and reminding everyone, here's the vision, here's the target, here's what we're aiming for as a church this year. And so tonight, before we dive into discussion, I want to highlight three things that God used in Scripture to restore a person. He uses the power of His Spirit, He used the preached and taught word to restore someone. And he also used the power of relationship and group support. God used all three of these things in Scripture to restore people. The power of his spirit, the preached or the taught word, and the power of relationship and group support. And this is why, as a church, we work to emphasize all of these things. We need the power of God to be at work in our midst. And we want to preach and teach the word that changes people's lives. And we also believe that we are better together. We can heal faster in community with each other. So that's why we emphasize relationship and group support. And that's also why we all must be people of prayer. We want God to be involved in everything that we do. And so I'm saying all of this tonight to remind you that you do indeed have a part to play in all of that. Even if it's in a small way, even if it's in a little thing that you have a part to play in that. I want to share just a few points and then we're going to pass out a few things and get some discussion going about some upcoming events and as a church that will take some group involvement But I want to mention just a few practical points for leaders. One, if you want to lead and lead well, you must show up early to prepare. And whether it's teaching a class or or whether it's uh, putting some things together, and it's always important to show up early and prepare for whatever that thing or that task is. That's a calling of a leader to show up early and to prepare. And also as the church, because we want God to be involved, we want the Spirit to be at work as leaders, those that desire to lead and whatever may be going on, whether it's a service or a Bible study, take some time early to pray. That God, we need you, Lord, in this service, in this Bible study, in this outreach, Lord, or in this serve project or or in this small group, God, we need you at work in this. Show up early to pray. Show up early to prepare. That's like a calling uh, of a leader. If you want to lead, connect with someone relationally. Connect with someone. Learn their name. Learn what's going on in their life. That's what leaders do. Meet someone, learn about someone, help someone, connect with them on a relational, on an emotional level. If you want to lead, follow up and follow through during the week. Whether it be following up with people or following through on a task or something to do, follow up and follow through during the week. And lastly, if you want to lead, give your best and lead by example. Give your best to God 
and to service and to ministry. If you can do it better, do it better. It's not about being perfect. It's about giving God the best that you have and by leading by example. So if there's something that you want to see reproduced, step out and lead by example. And so a few points, if you want to lead, show up early to prepare, show up early to pray, connect with someone relationally, build relationships, follow up with people, follow through on tasks or discussions, and then give your best and lead by example. Just a few practical leadership points I wanted to share with you. And at this point in time, Noah, I want you to help me out. And we're going to pass out some papers that kind of share and uh, some upcoming events going on this summer that we want to kind of just discuss here this evening. And we normally don't, you know, uh, do this on a Wednesday night, but because of the nature of some of these events, we want to key everyone in so everyone's informed and give people a, a chance to share and discuss a few points. We want your input tonight. And so if you're here and uh, we want to hear what you have to say or what, what's on your heart. And so I want to mention that coming up next month in the month of July, we have two different outreach groups coming and to minister and to help at Victory Chapel. And so we're really excited. The first is on July 15th through 17th, the Pentecostals of Alexandria in Alexandria, Louisiana, they're bringing a 30-person college team to help us put on a vacation Bible school or a VBS at Victory Chapel. And so we are pumped for that. That's going to be exciting. And so they're bringing a team just to do a VBS at Victory Chapel. And so that's going to be super duper exciting. And uh, these are a bunch of their college and career group at a church. And they're coming and uh, that, 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 that they know they knew us and they, their group goes on an outreach project once every summer. And they contacted us and said, hey, can we come do some ministry at VC for you this summer? What would do best? And we've always talked about doing a VBS. And so they're like, man, we've done that before. And then boom, shakalaka, they've got a VBS coming. And so we're excited about it. And so it'll be July 15th through 17th. And uh, is when they'll, they'll be with us in town. And they're going to stay a little bit late to do some, some social stuff. But during those days, they're going to help us with the VBS. And, uh, <clears throat> and the theme... They're providing all of the curriculum and the teaching material for the VBS. They purchased it on our behalf. And the theme is Jungle Roar. And uh, Jungle Roar. So as a church, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to decorate the entire church like a jungle, y'all. And uh, with some decorations, and we're going to set up kind of a, a makeshift stage especially for that weekend. And, uh, and so Tiffany is uh, helping uh, kind of uh, lead that charge. And so we're going to need, leading up to that weekend, people to help us kind of decorate and, uh, and uh, get some ideas on kind of turning the building into a jungle. And Tiffany, go ahead. Gotcha. So New Life in Austin has a has a, like a, a massive VBS, and Tiffany just reported that they're willing to give us a lot of their decorations, and so uh, that would be super cool, and uh, and so we're excited about the VBS coming. A few other things that we'll need help with is on Sunday evening of the seventeenth, we're going to put on a dinner, and for the team, and uh, it, it, Juan, you raised your hand. Uh, he's going to lead, uh, helping us with the dinner. And so what we do, one, is the church will cover the cost. And so think about a menu for about 30 people. And we can either cook here or cater. or what, We'll let you take that charge. And uh, so it'd probably be about 35 to 40, counting some of our people that may, may be present with that. So think about a menu and, just, and, and toss, toss that around. And uh, we'll also need and some help. 
with this event, uh, with administering registration. And so what we've done is this week, we created uh, a registration link that we're going to put on our website. It's not yet up, but we're going to put it up. And we're gonna, it's going to be free registration. It won't cost anybody anything. But we want people to register so we can kind of prepare for the number of kids. And uh, so we'll pass that around on our social media and through our church website. I want to mention that. And then we just need to get the word out and uh, think of some creative ways and, uh, to, to invite kids to participate in that. And uh, Eric, I wanted to uh, put something in your ear on the Saturday night. I think it would be the 16th. Um, that evening, I've shared with the team uh, that we some that San Marcos sometimes does uh, paddle runs at night, the glow paddles. And can you look into what it would look like for a group of about 30 people uh, to do like a glow paddle that evening? They want to do something fun, San Marcos style. And I said, well, we've got... Uh, a river, you know, and so just uh, think, talk to your peeps, and uh, um, and see if that would be a possibility. And uh, um, and so Eric is our uh, our resident kayak specialist, and so uh, uh, so if you need some kayaks, he's got your dibs. He'll help you in the back. And so it'll be a big it'll be a big weekend. And so the team, uh, their POA college team, will get in on Friday afternoon. And uh, originally we talked about doing a Saturday afternoon VBS that would conclude just before dinner. And, uh, um, uh, and so that would give us the morning to kind of set up, go through things, and then have the VBS. Uh, but Allie and Tiffany have mentioned maybe adding a special Friday night session as well. And, um, and then Sunday morning at VC they're going to put on a kids evangelistic service. And this team is awesome. They, they will pray with kids, a great opportunity to kind of for kids to get the Holy Ghost, to feel the power of the Spirit. And so they're bringing a kids evangelism team, and they're going to be taking over the whole service. And so we'll have a, a jungle service Sunday morning, and it'll be powerful. So we're excited about that. And... Um, uh, with Jungle Roar. And if you just want to show up and wear some big animal suit all weekend, you want to wear a lion suit or something or a dinosaur suit, or you want to participate or volunteer, and don't, don't raise your hands all at once, you know, for the animal suits. But, you know, if, if you just want to help and pass out food or be, work the snack table or work registration and, uh, or, or be kind of on the safety team, and you just kind of want your, your eyes to be open, walking around the building, make sure everyone's being safe. You know, you can be in the safety team. So it'll be a big, you know, big week, and we'll need everyone's support and, and help with that. And in reference to the decorations and the dinner. Um, and then uh, also uh, kind of getting the word out. Your neighbors that, that got kids that need something to do during the summer, you know. Finding ways to invite them and to and to share share the news. Allie, anything I'm missing in reference to the to the VBS? Go ahead. This is why I have the mic sitting next to me. Because I knew I knew this would happen. Sure. But it is a free VBS. We are not charging for this. We don't want to charge for it. And so that's why we're going to post the Eventbrite link on social media and our social media pages so people can go and RSVP the Saturday before so we can prepare for snacks and all that we need for the VBS. Um, but the age group that we're focusing on, and Tiffany, tell me if I'm wrong, I think we decided 4 to 12 and if you have a 13-year-old that is still interested in a VBS, awesome. They can come too. Or if you have a child that's a little younger, they can come, but I would encourage you to be with that child. Um, but the goal is to reach ages 4 to 12. But, you know, we're, we're open to the other ages as long as they're going to be engaged and you're with that child. Um, and then there was also one more thing I was going to mention, but I forgot. Oh, and if you would like to help facilitate, so Friday wasn't really planned, but I figured since we're all going to be, you know, having fun and decorating, we might as well extend it 
to Friday and our VC family can put something on for Friday. And so um, we're thinking probably some fun songs, a, a, le a little lesson, maybe an object lesson and, and some games. So if you would like to help, you know, facilitate a game or do some crazy songs with some crazy moves, you know, let Tiffany know. We are going to need all hands on deck, whoever's willing to help out with the fun for a Friday night and through the rest of the weekend. So um, Tiffany is your contact. Talk with her after church, and she will definitely plug you in. Awesome. 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 And if you just want to come and just be the hype person and just be excited and smile, you know, you can, you can do that as well. So we'll need everyone's help. Uh, for this event, and uh, and we also want you to pray over this event. Pray over this weekend that God will touch the life of a child, and that some kids would encounter His Spirit and His power. And uh, also want to mention we'll have we have we're having another group at the end of July, July 29th through 31st, the First Pentecostal Church of Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, they're also, uh, so some friends of ours, they reached out also and said, hey, our group is looking for somewhere to come and do an outreach. And I said, well, come on to San Marcos. And so they're coming and uh, to assist with a Saturday outreach event and then a Sunday evangelistic service. And so uh, we've asked them to preach. They're going to lead worship. This is a youth group of a, of a large church. And so they're coming just to serve and uh, so one thing we wanted to get some feedback, some input on, is in the past, as a summer outreach, we've done a lot of kind of water days in the park, uh, water games, and um, uh, we wanted to get some input that if we've got a big team coming in for a weekend, uh, we were thinking maybe that Saturday morning, which would be... Uh, what's the date? Maybe the 29th or the, 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 the 30th. I think the Saturday would be the 30th. How can we leverage having a group here in town? And what community or, or serve day outreach do you think would be most impactful with a group like this? Does anyone have any, any ideas? It's, it's, you kinda, you're thinking about off the top of your head. You know, we can always go back to Victory Gardens Park and do kind of a, a water outreach. And uh, we gave out popsicles, we gave out, what you know, we did water balloon games, you know, those kinds of things, watermelon, and yeah, we always have good turnouts and people love us over there, you know, or if there's something else, you want to change it up, we're, 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 the floor is open for ideas. I, I just, I, I saw you smack like you're about to say something. So it looks like he's going to pass, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not just messing with you. And, uh, and so, yeah, um, and so we can always repeat that event. That's always fun. It's easy to facilitate with a lot of people. And uh, it would be up to us to promote and uh, maybe do some door hangers the weekend before, you know, in that same neighborhood, those kinds of things. And uh, it would be easy to do to facilitate with that large group. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Revival on the river. Revival on the river. And give them an experience of what San Marcos is like. And the team will have you go. <laughs> yeah. So, so our two options to, to discuss is the, the water day at Victory Gardens and uh, or going down to the river, renting a stage, or doing something. And uh, these, are, these are kids that also, there are a lot of them are musicians. We could do some worship sets, worship at the river, and pray for people that may be there, pass out water bottles with our church logo or, 
you know, popsicles is our church logo or something. Um, go ahead. Well, so tell you what. All right. Why don't we put it to a vote? Oh, we know someone that can lead a mariachi band. Oh, man. If, if, if only she were here tonight, you know? Uh, no, we're, we're messing with you. And uh, so why don't we put it to vote? So vote one is we go to Victory Gardens Park. Huh? Are, are there any other ideas? Is there a third option? No? All right, so here we go. Vote one is Victory Gardens Park. We kind of repeat a water day outreach like we've done in the past several times. Or we do something closer to the river, like revival on the river. And whether it's an outreach or worship or just, you know. Uh, so here we go. If you want to vote for vote number one, and it's open, any, anyone in here can vote. If you want to vote for the water day, raise your hand. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you want to do revival on the river, all right, raise your hand for revival on the river. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we have now announced that uh, on July 29, 30, that Saturday, we're going we're gonna to work on planning a revival at the river. And so it is a done deal. And, uh, uh, and so we'll be kind of thinking through that. We'll probably have a follow-up discussion about what that will really consist of. I know. Volleyball court. I have a question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, they're, 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 though all those stages by the river are all available for rent. Yeah. Yeah. We just have to call and see if one of the stages are available to rent. We have someone that knows someone that's hooked it up. That knows someone that's hooked it up. Yeah. So, <laughs> that so we, we've got people that know people. Yes. So. So. What would you do on that day? Well, okay, so this is about... We could do a couple of worship sets. Yes, but yeah. does the river, like, run in front of the stage? It writes on the side of it. Yeah. So, so, so there are a lot of options. There's lots of options down there. And so uh, what we're going to do is, as a church, we all decide we're going to do revival on the river coming up. And so uh, we'll map that out in detail down the road. But we also wanted to jump. Does any questions kind of about that group? And that Sunday, they'll be preaching. And at the river, we can invite people to our Sunday service. Yeah. You know, and because uh, they'll, they'll coming back, they, uh, the youth pastor will be preaching, they'll be leading worship. I mean, this is a powerful little youth group, big youth group. And uh, we, could, we could do uh, advertise it for social media. Uh, we've done, um, uh, we've done San Marcos local Facebook page. We've sent out mailers, you know, at a certain radius downtown. So we have a lot of different options, you know. Yeah. 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 I think we that that would be a, a thing to check with the city if they allow us to do banners and things. But so we do have a lot of options to help spread spread the news, you know, about that. And uh, so two big events coming up. And help us pray about these events. And uh, uh, that God will give us favor, that God will put us at the right location that day for that outreach event. And so we're excited about that coming up on July 29th through 30th and 31st. And I also want to mention that we have talked about for several months now, and we're kind of waiting for the right time. And we are working on launching and uh, the Victory Chapel, Reco uh, Victory Chapel Recovery Group. A, a, a weekly support group 
for those in, in recovery on all types of different addictions. And so we, we've invested in uh, a faith-based recovery study called Life, the Life Recovery Journey. And it's kind of a faith-based biblical study of the 12 steps. And, uh, but it's a whole life study. It's designed to connect with recovery of all kinds of different kinds, whether it be uh, whether it be alcohol, whether it be substance abuse or codependency or whatever it may be, it encompasses whole life recovery. And uh, it's, it's a very, uh, very great uh, uh, system. And so I've got some books, some workbooks, some journals. And so if you are really interested in that, these are up for you to peruse. Come take a look at. And um, uh, we're going to pinpoint uh, a Wednesday night from 5.30 to 6.30 at the church. It will be an in-person group at the church. And uh, uh, it will replace that hour that we used to do anger management at. And uh, our anger management semester, the next semester that begins, it will be moved to a weeknight or on Zoom. And uh, so what we'll need... And those of you that have been asking for this for the last couple of months, we'll need a team of group facilitators that would help lead a group and facilitate a group. And so you won't have to write your own material. We'll give you a group, a lesson outline. We'll give you the content. We'll give you the study. And, um, uh, but in light of that, if you're interested in leading a group, uh, a recovery group night and being a part of that team, we're going to have a series of, of uh, at minimum three training nights. And uh, we'll probably just invite people over to the house. We're going to pass out the workbooks and talk through the 12 steps and expectations of the group and requirements for facilitators. Here's what a good meeting may look like and kind of setting up a system with giving each person a recovery mentor. And, uh, you know, if, if you've ever been familiar with AA, you know, each person is provided a sponsor. And, but we're, we're going to kind of call it, give each person a recovery mentor. That's someone that checks in with them on a regular basis. And so we'll, we're working with the uh, uh, teams that have done this and done it well in the past. We're getting some counsel on that. And, but a few things to discuss before we launch. And so we've got the material, we've got kind of the vision, and so now we just need people that would volunteer for that. And so as a facilitator, you'd lead a group from 5.30 to 6.30, uh, and so that means you have to get to the church, before, you, know, uh, you know, get things set up by about 5.15, and if we're serving donuts or something, take care of snacks, you know, all that, and, um, uh, you know, open up with prayer and those sorts of things, but we'll need kind of a team of those that would be interested in supporting something like this. So if you've ever uh, had, to, uh, ha- had to break a habit related to whether it be drinking or smoking or drugs, or you've got a testimony you feel like you would like to share, or God's delivered you from anger or codependency or emotional abuse and, uh, or any other kinds of things that, that you have a story you want to share that could encourage someone else, then we want you to let us know. And so if you're interested in, in supporting or being on that rotation, and uh, I want you to come and sign up with me. Just let me know. We'll put your name down. We'll probably do like a group text, and we'll invite you to our home and have a couple training nights. Because when we launch this, we want to launch it well and strong. And everyone kind of is clear on what, what's going on and, and what our target and vision is. And we'll also need to kind of think through... And uh, do we want to identify a, a special recovery ministry name? Or Victory Chapel Recovery, VC Recovery, or do, do, you, do you want, you know, any other thing? Uh, uh, does anyone have any, like, super-duper creative ideas? What would we name the ministry? Just Vic, VC Recovery? Or would you want something a little bit fancy? You were saying something. Go ahead. What was it? He's not going to say it? What is it? No? Maybe? Keep it simple? Freedom group? Yeah. 
Freedom group, breakthrough group, chain breaker group? Chain, chain breaker. <laughs> yeah? All right. The road to victory. I like it. Road to victory. Anyone else? Any other, any other ideas? Victory group. The victory group. Recovery through Christ. All right. RTC, Recovery Through Christ. All right, it's okay. And so if you've got any good ideas, let us know. We'll, we'll confirm that. And But we wanted to put it out there. So we're not setting a launch date yet. We want to kind of train all of our facilitators. And then when we launch as a team, we'll discuss how to promote the group, you know, those kinds of things. And uh, so it's an optional group that if you want to participate in that. And if you're curious about the material, and we've got several different things each facilitator, we'd probably give a workbook, and which has all the lessons in it, talking through the steps. And each participant will probably charge them five bucks for a recovery journal where they're able to take notes and follow the process. And there's like tons of different lessons and ideas and to incorporate this. So if you want to take a look at this or take a book home and kind of just check it out, peruse it, and um, uh, it'll be kind of be the study that we follow and we've been kind of uh, testing out a couple different programs the last couple of weeks. And they have like Celebrate Recovery and different things. But we really liked, liked this uh, material. And uh, so just wanted to make you aware of that. So if you want to volunteer in some capacity with that, sign up with me. And then we'll inform everyone and of that and uh, of, the, of our kind of first discussion night. And so the last thing we wanted to get some feedback on is uh, uh, we've had some requests Lately, and uh, for um, uh, we've had a lot of people share that they really enjoy kind of small group interaction and Bible study, chance to discuss and ask questions, and kind of and being really kind of engaging. And uh, what some people may define as taking Bible study out of rows and into circles metaphorically or symbolically, that typically when people come to church, they sit in a row and they listen to someone kind of teach or talk. And, uh, but a lot of sometimes, and, uh, you know, healing and life change and that engagement happens in a circle where it's discussing, it's sharing, you know, you're able to ask questions and kind of take time to break things down. And, um, uh, and so we're, we had the idea of in the months of July and August, rather than being one big group on a Wednesday night, and we've kind of done it in the past, but doing uh, split groups on a Wednesday, and so uh, that we have a group here in the big room, we put the chairs in a circle, and it's, it's more discussion, uh, it's more interaction, it's, it's more sharing and talking through different things. And then we have another group uh, in, the, in the back room of a second topic. And so our midweek topic, we've been on God, money, and me, will take us through several more weeks. And so that would be a potential topic. And we wanted to poll the crowd and share if there was a study like that that we did that was kind of interaction discussion based, what topics do you feel like people would desire to learn about or would kind of meet people's needs the most? Or what, do, what would you like to learn or to talk about? Anybody? Christy. Emotional healing. What else? What else would you like to talk more about or learn about? Anybody? Someone said working? Warfare, spiritual warfare. Go ahead, Juan. Witnessing evangelism. Anyone else? Healing. Why don't we just do healings and miracles?
Anyone else? Any, any other topics that, that you, you feel like you would be interested in learning about or you feel like someone else may be interested in learning about? Forgiveness? That's a good one. Yeah? All right, I want to say forgiveness slash anger. All right. It's like a study through the whole Bible, search for truth, yeah? All right. All right. Some good. Some good topics, and we want. We wanted to hear from you. Parenting. Parenting. All right. So I'll just put a couple of underlines right there for. All right, all right, very good, very good. And so this is your chance to speak up and put, put, your, put your words on the table. And uh, this is what we want to kind of hear from you about. So during the summer, I know summer's kind of crazy. Everyone's all over the map. And so we like the idea of just on Wednesday nights kind of slowing down a little bit. And our first Wednesday worship, we would continue that. And so the first Wednesday of the month, We'd continue with the meal. We'd have a full worship service and kind of midweek preaching. And then th- you know, throughout the month on a Wednesday, we'd have kind of two group offerings. And to kind of that, that's out of rows and into circles, a little bit more informal where you can discuss, you can share, you can ask questions, and really kind of dig really deep into certain topics uh, in kind of a, a group setting. And uh, the other option we wanted to kind of put out there and uh, to let people kind of think through and kind of vote it yes or vote it no, uh, is we thought about at the end of your, bottom of your paper uh, that just for the months of July and August, uh, pausing our men's and women's nights and replacing them um, uh, with in-home studies of certain topics. For example, we could, rather than having a men's night, uh, in a home, it could be, you know, one night on an emotional healing or one night on he- what the Bible says about healings and miracles. And uh, that you wouldn't, there wouldn't be pressure to attend all of them, but it would be kind of your Sunday, uh, so your, your summer options that you would have the options to study. And then so the second th- Thursday, we'd have one of these topics. It'd be open to men and women. And then on women's night, in the place of a women's night, in a home, we'd have one of these topics. It'd be open to men or women, if you're interested in learning about that, and uh, uh, giving you the option of attending or not attending based on what your interest is. And then in September, we kind of flip back to our normal uh, men's night and women's nights going forward from that point. But it would give people more time in homes, discussing things, more kind of deeper Bible studies, sharing asking questions, kind of group learning environments. And uh, so we wanted to put that out there as an option. Because if you remember, our church kind of started through a series of home small groups. And those who were a part of that process early on uh, have all said that they really kind of miss that and enjoy that. So just for the summer, for the next two months, July and August, we wanted to kind of present the option of going back to that kind of dynamic and, and then in September, we kind of flip back to what we normally do moving forward. And um, any questions or comments about that initially, kind of what, what that feels like? And again, you wouldn't have the pressure of attending both groups per month. You pick one that you're interested in, and then you show up based on if, if you want to show up. We'd probably serve like refreshments or goodies. It wouldn't be a full meal each night, but it'd be said to pray together in someone's home. Or if you just you, if you would be open to hosting one of those groups on one of those nights, you know those those kinds of things. I saw a hand. Yeah. 
No, there would be, in the place of men's night, it would be a small group study in someone's house of a certain topic. One, you know, to replace men's night, and then one to study, replace women's night. Basically, two per month, two in July and two in August, because we have a men's night every month and a women's night every month. So it'd be basically, you'd have two small group options per month. You can go to both, or you can choose one, or not, you know, go to either, based on what your interest is. Yeah, we'd just be two studies, two not, two not, because during the summer you're going on vacation, you're all doing a lot of different things, and you would just have an option, or if you're really interested in the topic, you go to the to the the small group on spiritual warfare, or when we talk about you know forgiveness, anger, and overcoming fear, you know, um, and so any any questions for clarification? It probably would still be at seven p.m. Sure. Yeah, we'd inform the location. And if you would like to host a group at your place and provide snacks, you know, we'd probably a couple minutes early have snacks and then we'd let every we'd give it we'd let everyone know at the beginning of July all the group locations for the next two months and the topics. Um, it would be one it would be basically be one group at a time, meeting at a time. So rather than having men's night, that go ahead. No, we'd just be at one, one house. So you, you'd have the option of just being at one house. You would basically have another option, and you pick and choose which one you have interest in. I think if, if we did two, two groups on a Wednesday, we were already doing God, Money, and Me, and that would be an option, and then we'd have, uh, uh, we, we would also be able to utilize Wednesday night. If you had eight for, for, for July and August, we'd have basically eight, eight small group options to learn about things. Um, yeah. So I just I wouldn't want to put you know too much on everyone during the summer, but uh, but we just wanted to throw the idea out there for those that have been asking for more small group Bible study dynamics, and um, so we would already kind of have we'd have two options on a Wednesday night. You know, you go to the class on God, money, and me, or you basically go to a class on a different topic, and uh, and then throughout the month of July and August, and you would also have an additional option of going to a few of these topics you know, as a small group. And, um, or we can keep men's night and women's nights as, as we're doing and just keep cruising as, as we are. But with, with this model, we'd flip back normal starting September forward. But this would give you the option of kind of doing some deeper dives and some different topics, you know, during the summer. Um, so we're going we're gonna to put it to the vote. And so what we're voting on is the additional option at the bottom of the paper is we're going to replace for just for the months of July and August. That's basically four different small group options. We're going to replace those uh, with four topics about deep dives into certain things. And it would be at someone's house who would host. There would be snacks and refreshments. We'd pray together. It would be a devotion. And then there'd be some facilitated discussion about different things. You'd be able to ask questions, kind of learn, and connect with your fellow church members, you know, in a kind of that casual relational setting. And you would have the option, you know, of attending whichever may have your interest. Correct. You know, just like we're doing for men's night and women's night each month. Um, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it to the vote. We're going to do a yay or nay. 
and uh, so a yes or no. So if you like that idea or you don't like that idea, or does anyone want to have a question for clarification? Uh, if you want to keep it just men's night, women's night, vote, vote no. Vote no. If you want to keep it as we're doing, or if you want to add this option just for the months of July and August, kind of change things up a little bit, uh, vote yes. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you want to vote no, keep things the same for the month of July and August, raise your hand. So if you like the, so if you, so we'd kick, we'd kick, we'd start that back up in September. But if you like the idea of having multiple topics and you kind of pick and choose which you want to learn about, uh, raise your hand to vote yes. So it looks like it's pretty dominant what we're going to do. And so, um, uh, and so for the months of July and August, I, we all voted and decided that we're going to add. So at the beginning of July is we're going to clarify location. We're going to clarify what topic, what night, and we'll give you the dates in advance. So you know exactly where it's going to be at and the address and the contact number for the person that's hosting. And if you would like to host a group a night, and let us know if you want to host one, and or if, you, if, if you want to kind of teach. And if you need help with some material, we can provide you with some material. And, um, uh, and so we'll, we'll take some of these, and we'll add some of these to the schedule. And so you will have kind of an option. And, or if there's something that maybe you want to learn about, that you want kind of discussed or taught, that you want to kind of talk with me in private about to say think about that, that's that's okay too, and so we'll kind of break down all of the details, and so you got a chance to vote and kind of give us some input and some feedback. So <clears throat> it's going to be an exciting summer. I'm pretty excited about summer at VC and our summer groups, and um, and so all of these groups will, will kind of be one lesson Bible studies, deep dives in certain topics, and uh, so. A chance to get involved, to learn, and to grow this summer, and uh, it's, you know, amidst all the vacations and travel and all that. <clears throat> all right, what we're going to do? Why don't we all stand this evening? We're going to end with prayer, and again, tonight was super duper different, but be, because of the nature of things, we wanted your input and to inform you of some stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so next Wednesday night, we're going to kind of keep rolling with God, money, and me. And then that will lead us into the month of July. A lot of things to pray about. A lot of different areas to get involved. It's exciting. It's exciting. And uh, please, get, the Smiths are nearly 100%. And, uh, and we're excited that, that, that they'll be back with us and this weekend. But keep all those in prayer that need it. And uh, why don't we pray as we close out tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, O oh God, for leading us as a church, for helping us, Lord, for leading us forward in Jesus' name. God, we pray you would restore, Lord, some people this year do a great work in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray God's blessings upon you. Pray of a great week, and we'll see you Sunday at 11 a.m. Amen. Yeah, he'll get the men's trophy for two months. Right. <laughs>